It's been three weeks since Trump ordered the assassination of General Soleimani and two since we imposed new sanctions on Iran. But thanks to the impeachment trial, the circle, and that heartwarming photo of Brad and Jen practicing Krav Maga locks, <laughs> America has already forgotten about Iran. But Iranians don't get to forget. So I sat down with human rights lawyer Gisu Nia and Senator Michael Bennett to find out how we got here. On January 3rd, an Iranian general named Qasem Soleimani was killed in Iraq by a targeted U.S. drone strike ordered by our president, ugh, still doesn't get any easier to say, Donald Trump. To learn more about why killing this man made everyone go like this, I went to a bowling alley to talk with human rights lawyer Gisun Nia. But where? Why a bowling alley? Because if Trump is going to play games with the safety of the world, I get to play games too, goddammit! Tell me, who was General Soleimani? General Soleimani was the commander of the Quds Force. Mm -hmm. The Quds Force basically uphold the revolution and revolutionary ideals of Iran, but they don't do things at home. They're involved in repressing people elsewhere. Great. As the head of the Quds Force, Soleimani protected Iran's interests by aligning with whichever unsavory militia was the flavor of the week. He worked with Hezbollah, probably armed the Houthis in Yemen, and even propped up Bashar al-Assad. Who else did he work with? Surely not the U.S. He did. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Okay. There was a point in time at which Soleimani was actually working with U.S. coalition forces to prevent ISIS from gaining new territory. What a complicated figure. And he had a really poppin' Instagram page. He what? Yes. Was it all pictures of the dogs that he painted? Oh no, I'm sorry. That's war criminal George W. Bush. Okay, he's technically not a war criminal, but these paintings should be illegal. Anyway, after we killed Soleimani, thousands of people took to the streets of Iran. Okay, so we're we talking more or less than for the Trump inauguration? Definitely more. Ooh, well that's gonna sting. Yep, looks like it could be more. So did all these people like Soleimani? It wasn't necessarily that they support the Iranian regime. There are certainly some people who were mourning him. But there was a lot of other people who just saw this as a really brute sort of military act. And the Iranian people don't want Trump intervening in their country. I also don't want Trump intervening in my country. While we've been intervening in other countries for years, what made this attack different was that Soleimani was a state official. And get this, we killed him without even talking to Congress. To learn more about how Congress was notified of the strike, I sat down with Michael Bennett, a human pair of dungarees who's still running for president, but who has a more interesting job as a member of the Senate Intelligence Committee, the committee in charge of war intelligence stuff. Can you reenact the moment when you got the notification that Soleimani was killed. I'll go first. Okay, good. Okay. Oh my God, what? Oh, shit. Oh no, oh God. Why? <laughs> Do a comedy show. We're on the break of war. Okay, okay. Oh. Okay, now you go. What? Did they give you any advance notice? No. All right, talk to you tomorrow morning. Bye. Wait, wait. Oh, hello. Can you pick up bananas on your way home? Yeah, that's easy. Okay. Love you. Bye. You know what I don't love? That Trump made a unilateral decision without even knowing how to spell unilateral. I think my deepest frustration is we have spent the last 20 years at war in the Middle East, and we didn't achieve any of the outcomes that we said we were there to achieve. We, we made the corruption worse, the drugs are worse, the Taliban is worse. So it's in that context that Donald Trump has decided that maybe we should risk provoking another war in the Middle East. So if you were the president, how would you declare war? Would you do it on Instagram? Would you do it on TikTok or Snapchat nude? I think I would do it by submitting a resolution to Congress saying, I'd like you to approve this effort to go to war. But with like cat ears. Cat ears might work. In meow opinion, we should go to war. And if President Bennett gets a war approved by Congress, is a targeted drone strike against a head of state the best way to go? No. In general, why it's not good for the world to kill state actors huh. is because it normalizes that. What? should we have done? 
I would have hoped to see him in a war crimes trial. It takes it into an international court that decides whether somebody has committed bad acts and whether or not they should be punished for those bad acts. There's something about justice for the victims, of course, but we also need a historical record of this. Right, or let Ryan Murphy make an American crime story about it. But at the end of the day, the sanctions are starving ordinary people in Iran. A plane filled with civilians has been shot down. There have been both Iraqi and Iranian casualties. Our actions have sparked a potpourri of violence that is affecting thousands of people. So how do we remove violence in all its forms? I don't think we get there with targeted strikes. And I think there could be a positive role for the international community to play. So not just the US unilaterally. Right now, if they were part of the UN Human Rights Council, they could convene a special session on Iran and talk about the Iran protests. But Trump pulled out of the UN Human Rights Council. I just feel like we could have consulted any one of his three wives who would have told us not to trust him when he says he's gonna pull out. <laughs> We avoided World War III this time, but will we be so lucky next time? The only way we're going to have a safer and more peaceful world is if we vote for the person the New York Times just endorsed for president, Elizabeth Warbashar.